Mega training. This is an exciting event. This is our seventh mega training here in the United States. Uh, if you've been to uh, more than two, please stand up. More than two mega trainings. Okay. If you've been to more than three, stay standing. More than four, stay standing. Nice. More than five? Five even. How many we got back here? How many? How many? Yeah, you guys. How many mega trainings? All of them. All of them. There you go. And one. Michelle, how many for you? All of them. All of them. Fantastic. Give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> it's been seven years for NPE changing lives and businesses around the world. Uh, as you saw in the, in the history of MP story, uh, just amazing now. To, this is actually the 11th event I've been to. Uh, seventh in the US, uh, we've had four in Australia. Yeah, four, oh, sorry, this will be the 12th. Four in Australia, be the fifth one this year in three weeks. And we just had our first one in the UK uh, three weeks ago, which is amazing uh, to think that something that started so small uh, now includes thousands and thousands of people around the world. Uh, you guys are going to have an amazing uh, experience here the next few days. And whatever you're coming into this uh, event with, uh, a problem you want to tackle, a challenge you want to work on, uh, a dream you have to grow, uh, you're going to find the answers here. Uh, and you're going to find them uh, certainly in the, in, in the content, the speakers and sessions, but also in the room uh, between each other. Uh, one of the most tremendous assets we have at MPE is you guys, is the community of people here uh, and the great leaders who uh, continue to come, pay forward, give back, uh, and want to support people who have been in their shoes just two years ago or three years ago uh, and have gone on to uh, have tremendous success. You're going to hear from folks in case studies this weekend. You're going to hear from folks in the member of the year competition. Uh, and I encourage you, you know, we, we set up round tables so you guys get to talk, you get to network, uh, meet each other, uh, share where you're from, uh, and, and on the breaks as well. Uh, a lot of learning is going to happen here. I'm excited for you guys about the journey ahead. I can't tell you how many times people, if, if this is your first, uh, we'll do this one. If this is your first mega training. Please stand up. Your very first mega training. Give these guys a applause. Awesome. I can't tell you how many people have come here for their first event. They followed us. Uh, on a webinar, they follow us on the blog, they purchase a program or two, uh, and then they come to a mega training event, and you know, a year later, or two years later, they're on stage. Uh, from you know, nothing to a business that's doing tremendously well. Uh, and so I'm excited for you guys, because the keys and the answers that you're looking for are here. Uh, so it's, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have a great time. We got a lot of fun planned. Okay, I'm gonna share, this is, this is a great session I've got for you today. I'm excited to dive into. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about uh, 10 keys for success on the entrepreneurial journey. I want you to, if you haven't done it already, pull out your notepad, pull out your pen, and take some notes. And really, I'm gonna ask you to write some things down. It's gonna help reinforce your learning, and it's gonna really help you grow. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna get right to work this morning. I'm going to start just with a little background. For those of you who have got so many new people here, uh, to share a little bit about my story, uh, for those of you who don't know it yet. Uh, my background uh, really is an athlete. My first dream in life was just to pursue my goals in sport. I uh, played a lot of sports in, in high school, uh, raced downhill snow skiing, uh, ran track and field, um, and uh, I had some scholarship opportunities in, in, in track and field. And, Music, I was involved in music uh, and academics, and I told my parents, I don't want to do any of that. I want to move to Florida, and I want to become a professional wakeboarder. My dad said, are you kidding me? Uh, I mean, I got to pay for school now. Uh, but he was incredibly supportive. He said, I'll support anything you want to do, uh, but you got to go, you're going to have to work for it yourself. So I went to school, got a job. My life was school, training, uh, and working to pay for training, uh, and really dedicated myself to, to that dream. 
And I was able to do it. I spent, uh, after I graduated school, I spent three years traveling around the world, uh, competing, having a great time with my friends. Uh, I competed on the US team in uh, world championships in Germany in 2001, European championships 2002. I had my first trip to England uh, back then and, and got to really spend time in Europe and, and uh, make a bunch of friends there. It was just awesome. I've been there a few times since, but to go back now as, uh, in the business world and have our first conference in London, uh, not too far from a couple of the lakes that I was at, uh, you know, in my tw in early 20s, uh, competing in wakeboarding. Um, and this is uh, some pictures from, from me doing the things I love to do down here in Florida. Uh, one of my closest friends, uh, Keith here, you can see us in Germany back in the day when I actually had longer hair. Uh, and, uh, and Keith has his, his bleached out, uh, is now working with our company. It's just, it's amazing, uh, the ride. I never thought I'd be here um, teaching business. I never thought I'd be teaching business around the world. Uh, so it's, a, it's amazing where life can take you. Uh, when I was wakeboarding, you don't make a lot of money in wakeboarding. Uh, very few people do, especially not back then. Uh, you give you some free gear and some boards and some clothes and maybe help a little bit with travel and that kind of stuff. Uh, but you do it because you love it and it's fun and you get to have time with your, with your mates, and your buddies, as we say. Uh, and so I started coaching. I also got a job coaching a little bit so I could have access to uh, a gym and uh, a gymnastics uh, facility so I could go practice some uh, acrobatics and things that would help my wakeboarding. I started working with that. I started coaching wakeboarding. Then I started working with adults in, in coaching fitness. And that's where I really knew I was, I was bitten by the bug, where I just loved the impact I could have on helping someone impact their life. Uh, and to see from teaching somebody you know, about health, about exercise, helping them improve their habits, uh, their lifestyle, how that transformed them really from the inside out. Uh, not just physically, but mentally, uh, their belief system in themselves, uh, their confidence, their faith, uh, and how that transferred into every aspect of personal development for them. Uh, their health, their relationships, their career, uh, and just see them grow and become better people. Uh, to see that impact, be able to make that impact, was just like a drug, as, as many of you know. It's so in inspiring to see uh, making a difference. And I started doing that part-time, uh, and then I finished my, my sports career, and my parents said, okay, uh, this is great, you've been doing you know, your, your sport goal, uh, you've been coaching a little bit, but it's time to go get a real job. Uh, people didn't perceive coaching as a real job uh, and not a serious profession. So I signed up for an MBA program. I went to my first day of classes, you saw a little bit in the intro there. Uh, listened to the professor talk who was, clearly could not run a business, that's why he was teaching for 50 grand a year about business. Uh, and I looked around the kids in the room who just wanted to party and extend their college experience and avoid work uh, and go climb a corporate ladder someplace where we're scared to take any risks or follow their dreams. Uh, and I knew that I wasn't in the right place. So I got up and walked out. Uh, and I said, you know, I'm passionate about what I'm doing with sports, with health and fitness, and I have no idea how I'm going to make all this work, but I'm going to figure it out. And it was scary. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit. Uh, I had the courage to do it. I had the courage to know this is not what I want to do. I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I'm going to figure it out. And I did. I went from uh, just coaching part-time to full-time, uh, building up my own client base, learning things as I went. Um, you can see one of my, my first clients here, a guy named Edgar, uh, was in the army here. Uh, and I started working with just people that I knew and people in, in my little community. Uh, and it was great to see, you know, my, my grandfather's, if you, if you haven't heard me talk before, uh, both in the military, military is a big background for me, uh, it plays a role in what we do now, our, our Give Back Project, Pushes for Charity, it benefits the boot campaign. I started working with these guys who need to get fitter for their PT test, uh, get in shape, started working with other people on their program, on their health. Uh, I started learning how to talk to people. Uh, believe it or not, I was not a confident speaker. Uh, I joined a little Toastmasters club for $36 for six months or whatever the dues are. They met at the local church uh, with uh, you know, a mix of people that spoke Spanish and English, a room of 12 people. Uh, and I remember the first speech was, uh, who's here who's been to Toastmasters? Raise your hand. And what's the first speech? The icebreaker. What do you talk about? Yourself. And I was nervous. <laughs> I think it's a subject matter I should know a little bit about. But you get up there, and it's, 
you know, it's 10 minutes and you talk about yourself. And I remember my hands sweating and just like, oh, I gotta tell my whole story and blah, blah, blah. These are people that, you know, just everyday folk. It wasn't a big conference. It wasn't like anything serious on the line. And I was nervous. Made it through that. Went on to finish the 10 speeches, learned about speaking, and started applying that to talk about what I was passionate about, about sports, about health, about fitness. Started doing workshops. I would regularly do one, two, and even three, four workshops a month as a way to meet people, to engage them, invite them into the business. And it became a tremendous way for us to meet people, us to grow the business and, and acquire clients. I was really passionate about getting people results. Uh, to me, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it unless I could get people results, really good results. And it's amazing uh, when you focus on the pieces. Uh, I don't even know a ton about, you know, a ton about stuff that you guys know today that's been expanded in the knowledge base of health and fitness in the last you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, but I knew enough on how to motivate, how to put a, <laughs> assess people, how to put a plan and program together, how to work with them on implementation of that plan, and how to motivate, support them, encourage them, help them overcome their challenges, and then uh, you know, document that change, help them grow. And I've produced some amazing client success stories. My first client uh, that I really worked on transformation-wise, uh, rented space in a little gym here. There was, you know, well actually, it's not true, I'll tell you the real story. My first client was in a Bally's gym where you really couldn't train clients in there, you had to pretend to work out with them. Anybody ever have that experience? You can raise your hand. Yeah, we're working out together. Me and this 80-year-old guy, my workout partner. We like to do the same workout. I just lighten up the weights a little bit for him. It's my first training experience. Then, I'm like, all right, I need a place to train people. Fine, there's only one gym in town where I can go rent space. 300 bucks a month, cash. And it's this like, place that's, you know, full of prison convicts and uh, SWAT officers are about the same profile sometimes, uh, and just one side of the law or the other, uh, and they only take cash, because that's, you know, it's all you got, you don't have a bank account when you get out of jail, uh, and uh, they're the only place to take an independent trainer, 300 bucks, go train people. And I'm bringing, like, people in there to train, like, business professionals, you know, that would, like, next to the guy with tats and, you know, just got out of prison and, you know, it's a little scary. Uh, and you think, why would these people come to the, why would they allow themselves to come to this place? They were uncomfortable, they were scared, but they were confident in me. They, they loved the service that I gave uh, and the results I could deliver. And once you can prove you can deliver results, gosh, it's amazing how people will flock to you. Because in this industry, there are so few people who will do what they say they can do and actually deliver a great service and actually produce results. Stay committed to that, produce results, document that change. Before you know it, I had a book, uh, a whole binder, which I still have today, of people's before and after photos, unbelievable change, uh, all demographics, age ranges, body type, uh, and such, and helping people uh, get to where they want to be. Uh, and that's a huge point for success, is document your social proof. We're gonna talk about that more over the weekend, but if you don't have a book of success stories, you need to start producing one. It makes everything work better. It makes your marketing work better, makes your sales work better, gives you the confidence to position yourself uh, as better than, than, than others in the space, uh, and prove what you say you can do, your promise. So I progressed from the little gym where I could pay $300 cash a month and said, all right, I got full up with clients and I'm gonna move on, I gotta keep growing. And I actually started having locations. I had two locations, I had one here in, in Central Florida, uh, in, in Orlando, uh, one in a town called Claremont, about 45 minutes west of here. Uh, and I grew up to a staff of eight coaches uh, and, uh, at, at the both facilities. We worked with over 653 clients over three years time uh, from the whole area. It was an amazing experience. And around that time, I was trying to figure out what's next for me. Do I go do location number three? Do I go buy into some kind of franchise or something? Well, I already knew how to do a fitness business, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, and what do I do? And for me, as an entrepreneur, and, uh, and you guys are, are learning that 
you know, this may be an experience for you that you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're in, in, you know, passionate about business, about growing your business. And the biggest thing for me was bottom line, if, I was not, if I'm not challenged, I'm bored and I need a new challenge. And I felt bored. I was looking for that next challenge. And around that time, I got a wake-up call. I got a wake-up call for life. Uh, I had a, a freckle that had turned dark, my forehead right here, and I was home for the holidays, and my mom said, hey, you gotta go get that looked at. I said, yeah, mom, whatever. You know, when I'm 60, I'll worry about that. Like, Gramps, I don't need to worry about that now. Uh, she said, no, go get that looked at. My name is stage four melanoma cancer. Uh, can you imagine at 26 years old, uh, being told that you have stage four cancer, being rushed into nuclear imaging with people that are clearly dying, uh, they're not gonna make it, and you're like, you know, in the waiting line of those folks, where you're wondering, you know, am I not gonna make it too? Uh, and going through uh, scans, going into surgery, taking out eight lymph nodes right around Halloween, it looked like Frankenstein with stitches all on my neck. It was kind of freaky. Uh, and, uh, and then having them check the pathology, sending around to multiple labs, not sure if this is good or not good. It's a scary time for my health to be facing the possibility of death. And if you've ever thought about that, um, it, it, it brings to, right, to front and center a lot of things. A lot of things about life, about what's important to you. If you only had a few months or a few weeks or a year left, what would you do? How would that change your decisions? What would be important? What would not be? What fears that you have now really wouldn't matter? It's a great gift. It's a really hard time. Unbelievable gift. Some of the best learning I could ever experience. And I'll tell you, a big lesson that came out of that experience for me uh, that I'll share with you is that uh, you don't have to fear things in your life that appear as crisis. Uh, Dan John, one of my great friends you'll hear uh, from tomorrow, uh, talks about a great story going to the Olympic Training Center and some training he was doing with some of the coaches there and, and uh, having people list out what are all the, the most challenging things that have happened to you in your life, the most brutal experiences you've been through, you know, that really just knocked you off your game and were emotionally challenging, spiritually challenging, physically challenging, whatever you went through. Making a list of those pieces. On the other side, making a list of the best things that have happened to you in life. The best memories you have, the best moments of accomplishment, of success, of, uh, of, of all the joys of life, and inevitably, when you put those lists side by side, you can draw a line. You can see the worst things were absolutely connected to the best things. It's staggering. It's staggering when you go through that exercise to see. Uh, and that was the case for me. Uh, that was absolutely the case for me. So the big lesson I have to share with you is that you don't have to fear crisis. Uh, it is scary, and you will fear it, and you will have trouble emotionally working through it. Uh, but try to relax, because in, in, in my experience, it's always life bringing you to a better place. And to readjust your course for something greater that lies ahead. If I had never been through cancer, I probably wouldn't have got, of, got out of uh, my fitness business. And I certainly wouldn't have started consulting, and there wouldn't be NPE here today. So try to relax and enjoy the ride. So my course gets redirected. I sell the businesses. I have some money from that because they were successful. I have some time to, to uh, just to kind of figure out life, to take care of my health. And I started doing some consulting with some friends of mine around the country, uh, traveling a little bit, doing workshops with sometimes even five people in a room, like one table, uh, and uh, helping people with different aspects of their business, and just discovered really about the marketplace, about the challenges uh, that everybody's facing. How to sell, how to manage, how to package and price their services, how to market, how to grow a team. All those things that are critical skills and areas of growth and development you have to learn, you have to have to, to grow in this industry and to really grow a business. And through that you can see uh, one of our first clients there, Hud Allred, who's, who's here today. Uh, and, uh, and still with us years later. And then I got to a workshop uh, in 2006, uh, with, met a guy named Dan Kennedy. Uh, sat there in the audience and uh, listened to Dan 
uh, talk about, and, and Bill Glazer at the time, talk about uh, the business model of how to package up coaching, consulting services, how to deliver them in, in a business model. I uh, really saw the light of how to, how to make this stuff work. I had knowledge, I had experience, didn't know how to deliver it per se. And from there, uh, we launched our Goal Plus program in November, two weeks after that workshop. It was very much a, a live event like this you guys are at. I got knowledge, I immediately applied it, I started implementing things immediately, uh, launched a program, all of a sudden have recurring revenue in the business. Uh, many of you came in. Who came in on Goal Plus in November? Uh, stand up, yeah. If you came in on Goal Plus in November, yeah, go ahead, don't be scared. Yeah, some people that are on our team today. Uh, member of the year, Randy Hartz, Tom Jacobs, Stacey Wisher. Grew their business very successfully, sold them now on our team. Working with their clients all over the world, amazing. Thanks. And went on a run to, uh, to, to really find out what are the needs and issues that people are experiencing how to package up solutions and support them, how to coach you to implement them, install them, and how that can change your business and your life. Started with, our, we had our Gold Rush program, which is a workshop program, how to deliver a community-wide seminar. We had people filling up rooms with you know, 50, 100, 150 people in a room for a workshop to kick off their new year. Uh, and then you know, that was great, gave them a great buzz, gave them leads, gave them PR and visibility, helped them establish strategic alliance partners, and then all of a sudden, off the back end, some people could convert those people into clients, other people could not. They didn't know how to sell. They didn't know how to package and price their services. They didn't know how to sit down and communicate, have a consultative uh, process for communicating the value and what they deliver, discovering needs of the people that, that need help. And that's where we launched Auto Closer. If you ran through Auto Closer, raise your hand. Yeah. This was where Auto Closer was born, patching up the sales systems that I had taught. Uh, or I'd, I'd established in my original business. Uh, then we had people all of a sudden go from 2,000 a month in income to 25,000 a month in income in like three, four months. Great, now you got money, creates another problem. What's that problem? Time. Too many clients, right? You turn into a selling machine, you got too many clients. Who here, if, if we gave you 30 clients next week, would able, be able to handle them in your business? Okay, not the whole room. Yeah. Next problem was you need to build a team. How are you gonna service all these clients? What are we gonna do? So we packaged up our duplicator system. Put that together. If you've been through duplicator, raise your hand. Yeah. Help you start put a team together how to manage all the work coming at you, how to divide roles and responsibilities, put an org chart together, job descriptions, uh, start to structure the compensation packages, establish a business model that works with more people than, than you, create some freedom uh, for you to not have to do all the work all the time, move from a job to actually owning a business. Now we have people with businesses, a few months after that, they're doing you know, more than 10 times what they were, and they're doing, they've got a big team, it's a bigger business, what does a bigger business need? Needs leads, needs marketing, right? You got a big, you know, you got a big machine, takes a lot of, takes more gas. You can't just rely on a couple things of word of mouth and, you know, like you could when you were small. You actually need real lead generation and marketing systems for a business as it grows. So we packaged up our deep core system, started teaching that, teaching the core principles about direct response marketing, list building lead generation, nurturing, uh, technology to run your marketing, manage all the pieces uh, and help people get that in place. All of a sudden they started to have consistent uh, growth, more leads, scale, growth, and now they got a real business. We launched our VIP program uh, to introduce more done for you campaigns, systems, tools, coaching. We launched our commander program, uh, more around reports, metrics, leadership, uh, the advanced components about yourself as an entrepreneur, pro project management, time management that you need to grow in as you scale. You can't play the game like you did when you were small. You gotta learn how to play it at a higher level strategically to grow. Went through a controller. We had people, all of a sudden they were doing, you know, from a few thousand dollars a month to $50,000 a month in revenue or beyond. You actually had to need to know a little bit about money, a little about accounting and finance. Be able to watch those metrics, forecast your cash, uh, know where the peaks and valleys are, 
um, how to master the margins, all the, the systems you need for receivables, for payables, and so on. Uh, taught that in the controller. And we launched our EA program. That's where we took all the core systems and put them together in a, in a package uh, for specific business models. So independent trainer or studio facility owner. Helping you put the core pieces together you need, uh, and, and most people come in today through our EA Studio program for sales, for product packaging, for team building, for capacity build, and for marketing lead generation, and how to get those fundamental pieces in place. It's been an awesome run over the past few years. And to see that continue to grow with new crops of people coming in every year, uh, see that overseas in the UK, in Europe, in Australia, uh, and so on. Uh, we have had people achieve tremendous success. You can see some early pictures here of folks that came in on some of our, our first programs and won contests. You can see Clint Barr here uh, won the Deep Core contest and uh, one of his early checks. Uh, I got one of Randy here and his, uh, his iPod, yeah. Uh, rocking that. Um, John, where's John? Yeah, John, I don't know if you remember this picture. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this one. Yeah, it's a great, it's a, there's a flip video. Uh, this is back when John was at Fitness 19 uh, and uh, uh, as a manager of facility. Uh, a couple years later, he comes to, to Mega Training. He's out of his own, wants to start a facility. He'll hear from him later, but two years later, uh, started you know, from nothing to a facility now, doing over half a million a year on its way to a million a year. Amazing uh, story. It's been great to see the success. Uh, went back uh, two years later, won Info Market of the Year Award. So I was on, very much like you guys, sitting there at a conference, listening to all these people on stage share their stories. And I said, I want to win that award. And two years later, went back, won it as uh, top information marketing company of the year. Uh, went on to... Uh, uh, when Infusion uh, runner-up for their ultimate marker of the year. Uh, this is good friends of mine, Dan Bradbury in the UK and uh, Darcy Juarez, who now uh, actually is head of marketing for GKIC today. Uh, funny story about Dan, uh, we go way back. Uh, he does admit that, uh, that I should have won. He bribed the audience, he cried on stage, and uh, the only contest I've ever come in second in my life. I'm not bitter in any way whatsoever uh, about that. Uh, but uh, just saw him. Just saw him in the UK and uh, great guy. We're, we're close friends today. Uh, went to Australia for our first mega training in 2008. Uh, went down, you can see uh, there's Rick, there's Andre. He took us to our first Australia uh, uh, footy game, they call it. No rules football. It's a pretty awesome sport. I don't know if you've anybody seen Australia football on TV? It's, it's really cool. Yeah, uh, great stuff. Had our first member of the year down there, Dirk Hansen, uh, hear, hearing their stories. It may start to be amazing when you like, go to other places in the world and been in. And there's like people who've studied your material and changed your life with it. It's like definitely trips you out. I'm kind of getting more used to it now, but uh, wild experience. Uh, we're listed on the Inc. 500 list. Uh, first year eligible, number 131 in 2010. I've been listed four years running uh, now every year since. Uh, it's about a year ago we opened up our UK office. Um, I remember, so Ben Davis, little story, uh, you saw a little bit in the video. Ben Davis comes to, uh, to borrows money from his dad, that's true, uh, flies to Boston, our first mega train in 2008, signs up for the VIP program, also borrows more money from his dad to do that. Uh, the bank of dad is awesome, if you can tap into it. Uh, and. Uh, and, and our first international, really, uh, member in UK, Europe, uh, cranks his business from eight clients to 258 clients, absolutely destroys it, and uh, comes over for our, uh, our winner's weekend day. He was a finalist for a member of the year competition, uh, and starts talking about where he's at, what he's doing. He he's kind of keeps saying, hey, you know, there's a lot of people over here that, that need your help, and that need MP's help. And I said, Ben, you know, put a plan together. Let me see, like, what would, what would you do if we were start, starting to be in the marketplace? So he drafted up some plans. A couple other people approached me as well, drafted up plans. The guy that had the best plans was Ben Davis. I said, Ben, what do we do? He said, well, we should sponsor this convention called FitPro, have you speak there, uh, meet some people, and that's a great test. So I signed up for this test. It's like a, a $25,000 investment. Didn't really have 25 grand just to throw around at the time, but doing a few different things. But I decided to make the investment. Uh, we're a few weeks out from the event. He signed up in Dece uh, December, committed the events in April or something. And 
Uh, we go and, and, and like we're feeling no love when we get to the event. Like the people don't want us there. The event promoters, there's no love for like us as Americans coming in. You know, we were supposed to have these. We rented a room. We were supposed to have sessions. They put like three people signed up for our event. Like no promotion. I mean, I'm like, this is not good. Maybe we should not be here. We should not go. But we're there. I said, let's go. Let's follow through. Made a decision. Got my team on site. I said, guys, here's our objectives. We're here to do one, two, three, uh, and started our first talk. We had like five people in the room. Next talk, they come back, they bring their friends. Now we got 15 people in the room. Next talk, they come back, they bring their friends, they want to hear more. All of a sudden, we got a full room, standing room only in the back uh, for our session by the end of the conference. Uh, absolutely amazing. I said, all right, I guess we're doing, we're, I guess we're going to business in the UK. Here we go. And uh, uh, spent a year investing, and then officially had our grand opening. Uh, and a uh, funny story about this picture. You see the guy right in the front, that, front that's got his eyes covered like this? Doesn't want to be identified in the photo. Uh, so we had a, a contingency of Irish folk come over. And Ben hands these guys a t-shirt. Welcome to the Grand Open UK office with a Union Jack flag. Wear this t-shirt. Uh, you're talking like Bloods and Crips, OK? <laughs> and uh, these guys are very uncomfortable putting a shirt on, like you see him like turning red, and then to get a photo, this guy's where he's gonna get shot when he returns home uh, to Ireland. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, uh, really culture sensitivity by Ben Davis. Uh, uh, so, yeah, good story. Uh, anyway, these guys are just, we just got to see him all new. He's, now have gone, be very successful members, and just saw them all in the UK. Uh, and it's, it's now a true global community. NP is a global community. I have three conferences like this around, you know, last one coming up in a few weeks in, in Sydney. Uh, it's amazing to see the continued growth. We got events kicking off in, in small events in, in South Africa. Uh, we have uh, clients in Dubai, the Middle East now, and talking about doing our first event there, a uh, small workshop. Uh, this, is, this community continues to grow and expand, and it's, it's so powerful. Uh, I think what's most inspiring is the, is the quality of the people coming in that are attracted to, to what we do, to what we have to offer, and to hear your stories. I mean, you guys are what, what make this great. I mean, my team and I, we work hard, we, we bust our hump to deliver great services and, and products and systems and coaching and tools, uh, but it's you guys, it's the community that really makes it what it is. Uh, and so I just want to thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause for, for all that you do. For having the courage to step outside your comfort zone, to follow your dreams, to invest and sacrifice where other people won't, uh, it, it's absolutely inspiring. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it just it fuels us every day to get up and to support uh, your dreams and, and what you guys do. So uh, what I'm going to talk about this morning is probably my favorite day of this year. Um, and uh, it was actually in July. Got together in, in San Jose, California. We had a fast forward workshop. Some of you might have been there. Uh, we met at VIP University. And we got together for a couple of days prior to that with our entire coaching staff, um, most of them present on site, a few conferencing in remotely. Dave Fannin uh, on Skype with us, Rick and uh, Andrew, our coaches in Australia on Skype. And by the way, coordinating uh, when we got to do calls, it's like, Somebody's either up late at night or somebody's up early in the morning. We work together across the globe now. Uh, and uh, we sat down and spent uh, really a, a 10 hour day um, hammering out what are all the ways we've seen people fail over the past seven years. Uh, all the mistakes made, all the challenges they've faced, uh, the places they've fallen off, you know, the wagon or uh, misstep here or there and really uh, you know, screwed things up for themselves and their business and getting where they want to be. And then we listed out what are all the ways in which we've seen people grow and the tremendous ways in which they've conquered challenges, overcome obstacles that you have no idea how it could be done. Um, and, uh, and they put the pieces together and in quick you know, order uh, have overcome challenges. Whether they get hit with a health challenge and they've got to generate money quickly to to, uh, to get medical care, uh, or people that were on welfare uh, and, uh, and needed to get off you know, welfare, um, to where people are, get fired from a job 
uh, working for a gym and um, you know, a month later they have their own facility and, and doing 17, 18,000 a month in business. Uh, just amazing stories. What are, the, what are the tangible pieces that have been the, the qualities, the traits, the principles, the things they've applied uh, to make that happen? And then we went through this process of, of looking at all those and, and categorizing those, those out in the different areas and looking at what's the, the, the tops and the smarts and the, uh, the leaders and drivers of each of those. And we came up with a list uh, called the NP Client Success Principles. Who's seen this at all? Okay. I don't really take you through it. We're going to talk about it uh, in depth today. And, uh, you might have seen it. I want you to really know it. I want you to hear it from me and from my team because if there's any gift I can give to you for this whole conference and this whole experience you come here, it's these really laws and these principles of success. If you follow these, and any time you find yourself in, in a situation where you don't know what to do, or you don't know which way to turn, you don't know how to overcome a challenge, if you follow these principles, they will guide you through. I know it. They've been tested thousands and thousands of clients around the world, every region of the world, for over seven years. And the collective experience from myself, my coaches, you're talking about you know, literally millions of coaching hours uh, in that time is amazing. And number one, you can write this down, number one, it all starts with personal responsibility. It's about taking active responsibility for your success because no one else can do it for you. You have to stop blaming circumstance. To stop blaming your parents, your business partner, your family, an ex-partner, an ex-family member. To stop blaming everybody. You have to just take complete responsibility for where you are now and where you want to go. No one else can do that for you. The government is not going to do it for you. You have to do it yourself. I want you to read this with me. What's number one? What's number one? Awesome. Okay, that's where it all begins. If you're willing to do that, that opens the door for you to move down the path. Number two, this is probably my favorite. Because once the door is open, the opportunity is there, but it is freaking scary to take that leap every time. It doesn't get easier. I'll tell you, even at my level, 93 countries around the world, three regions, it's still scary. You don't get a perfect playbook for how to do this. You gotta face and overcome challenges all the time. And you can't do that without courage and without faith. Uh, and as a business owner, you absolutely must attack your fears to grow. Who here can remember making a decision to quit a job? Yeah. How about to hire your first staff member, wondering how you're going to make payroll? What about signing a lease on a facility? Am I going to be able to pay that lease? What about signing a bigger lease? Am I going to be able to pay that one? What about hiring more staff? Am I going to be able to pay them too? Right? Every time there's a voice that says, you have an opportunity, you can do this, and there's a voice that says, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't work out? What if this doesn't happen the way it's supposed to? What are you going to do? What if you lose it all? What if you go live with your parents? What if you can't afford for your family? All those fears you're going to have to conquer to grow. Every one of them. And you can't do it without courage, without faith. You know, a great quote I heard recently was, you can write this one down, is to doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. Doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. And that's absolutely true. 
You're going to face things in business. You're going to face challenges in life, your health, relationships, uh, financial challenges, staff challenges. All of them are going to be part of the journey. But if you have the courage to look those in the eye and to do the thing anyway, to take that leap, even when, and it will be scary every time, and have faith, uh, you can grow. What's number two? Excellent. This is one of my favorites, so I want to do it one more time. Number two? Awesome. I want to hear real enthusiasm. This is what you got to do to cover, cover that fear. You got to have the power within you. One more time, strong as you can give me. Number two. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, number three is your business is not different. I can't tell you how many people come to us, and maybe even many of you were first hearing about MPE, first hearing about what we do, and say, ah, that's not for me, my business is different. I have this type of facility, that doesn't work for us. We do Pilates or yoga, and that doesn't apply here. We do CrossFit, and we don't need to market. We do, uh, you know, this, we don't need to sell, people just show up and they like us, and they give us money. I mean, all kinds of crazy um, beliefs, false beliefs that people have about why something can't work for them. I can tell you, if you want to grow, you got to let that go. And you got to open your mind to the fact that your business is not any different. The fundamentals of success are the same for every single business in the world, in every region of the world, in whatever niche programming or fulfillment model you have, the fundamentals apply. You've got to define who you are, your vision, your plans, your targets, your model of success. You've got to have a system for how to package and price and sell your services and communicate the value of what you have to offer. You have to have a system for growing and building a team if you're going to grow beyond just yourself doing all the work. And you've got to have systems to attract new people into the business, to learn about what you have to offer, to engage your sales process, and to grow a client base. And on and on and on. The fundamentals are the same for everybody. So, what's number three? Excellent. Remember that. Number four is to follow the dang instructions. Do not reinvent the wheel, just follow the instructions. I also can't tell you how many times, even at live events, doing workshops, we're sitting there and we're teaching people a sales process and auto closer. So look, this is the system, these are the questions you ask, this is the problem building script, this is the prequal script. Let's, let's sit here and let's review it. And I put a, put a sheet of paper in, some, in front of somebody and say, read the script. And they read part of the script and they make up their own three, four sentences. And I'm like, okay, no. Let's try this again. Read the script. And they read part of what's on the script and then not the whole script and add their own pieces. They want to embellish, they want to add this, they want to change that. Oh, it sounds better if I do this or that. Let me change this here. Or a closing slide. Instead of having the prices laid out like this, lay them out this way because I like how the way that looks better. No. Let me tell you, we have tested this stuff millions and millions of times all over the world. You are not going to make it better right now. Maybe someday you will, after you've done more millions than we have, but right now you have not. So what you need to do is just make this easy on yourself, make this easy on us, let go of your ego, and just follow the dang instructions. Read the script, follow the system. I can't tell you, the most successful clients, and you guys know this to be true in your business, the most successful clients you have, why does it work? They do what you tell them to do. And they don't argue with it, and they don't make it challenging to implement, they just do what you tell them. And it's easy for them, it's easy for you. 
And you're like, man, if I just had to work with people like this all day, this would be awesome. And then you go to the client who's like banging their head into the thing every time, and you're like, oh my gosh. Why do we gotta make this so tough? So don't be that client. That client that is, drives you crazy and makes it challenging for you to do your job and you to help them grow, don't be that person. Let go of your ego. Make this easy on yourself. Make this easy on those around you. And just follow the dang instructions. You with me? Yes. Okay. Let's read it number four together. Number four. Follow the instructions. All right. I love it. We're getting there. Number five. Write this one down. And it really does help when you write it down. It reinforces your learning. Don't just sit there and write. Number five is CVMVGP. I'll tell you what that stands for. Core values, mission, vision, goals, projects. And even if you've done this, you want to continue to revisit it. You want to continue to make it better. You want to continue to refine it. We spent yesterday morning with our EA and VIP clients nailing this down, hammering it out, tightening it up. It's amazing how far you drill down and you see things that are not clear. And if you don't have clarity in where you're going, it's really hard to get there or know, know when you have arrived. You have to know what you stand for. You have to know why it's important to you. You have to know where you want to go. And you got to know how you're going to get there. Each of those questions has to be answered. And you have to keep them clear in front of your face. Core values. We talk about those being the stars in the sky. I love that example because I think about the great explorers who uh, in the early years, 1400s, took a sailboat, set off across the ocean, discovered the Americas. And people in Europe thought, some of them thought, oh, the world's flat. These are just guys who are going to sail off the end of the earth, and the boat's going to just go and be gone. Or, you know, and, the, and they're never going to come back. And they had the courage to say, we don't know what's out there, but we're willing to go explore and, and figure it out. And that really is, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. You are an explorer. You're willing to go take risks, to face the unknown, and have the courage to figure it out. You don't know where, how you're going to get there. You don't know all the pieces of the journey. And what these sailors, how they navigate in celestial navigation, is they have a compass and they have stars. And they get to see where they are in relation to the stars and where the compass points them in the right direction to find their way out, find the promised land, and find their way back home. And that's what you need as an entrepreneur. You need to have those, that navigation system. You've got to be able to look up at all times, and when you feel lost and know where you are, I know how to get where you're going and know how to find your way home. Core values will do that. They're going to know, let you define for yourself what's important, how you're going to make decisions to grow your business, to hire people, to attract and grow a team, uh, to expand, uh, grow offerings, and so on. I guarantee you, um, in five years, in 10 years, your business is going to be a lot different than it is today. Right? The things that you teach in fitness today, were you teaching them five years ago? The same programming? 10 years ago? 20 years ago? It evolves. Everything evolves. And you've got to evolve with it. And one of the best ways to do that is know what's important. So you can make those decisions about your continued growth and evolution. And then know where you want to go. One of the big, big things we talked about with our clients yesterday, we were looking at goals and projects, or sorry, how you're going to get there, is no, defining what's important. One of the most challenging things as an entrepreneur and business owner is you have a list that never ends. So what's your to-do list? Show me, people show me like 100 things. Okay, let me tell you, you're not going to be able to do all those 100 things. They're not all going to get done today. So let's define what are the most important things to move the business forward right now, Let's focus our energy in, on those. Let's get them done. We like to talk about the three big rocks in a 90-day time span. Know what your big, three big rocks are. And then another big piece is define what's the measure of success. People put down, I want to implement a marketing plan. Why? Well, to generate leads. How many? You've got to have 
metrics. You've got to have defined measures of success for your priorities so you know when you've accomplished them. Not just stuff to do. It's very easy to get lost in stuff to do all the time. It doesn't mean you're accomplishing anything of significance or a result that's going to lead you forward. Number five. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's right. We'll do this one one more time. Number five. Okay, there you go. CVMVGP. Yeah, say that ten times fast. We'll have a contest on it later. All right, number six is about value. Value equals CE plus R plus R. This is a big one. Uh, when you're in the service business and you're all in the service business, it's all about value, perceived value by your customer. Uh, you have got to focus on that all the time. Review it, look at ways to improve it, make it better, uh, and to maintain your positioning in the marketplace, to be able to charge what you need to charge to be profitable, uh, and have a sustainable business, and so on. And a lot of people struggle with, how do, you, how do you define value? Well, we've had a formula for a few years now uh, to define that. And CE stands for Client Experience. First R stands for Relationship. And the second R stands for Results. And you can focus on each one of those individually. You can focus on each of them collectively. And the more you tune those up, the more you create a better client experience, the more you build better relationships, the more you get better results, you increase the value you're delivering to the people you serve. And when you focus on delivering more value, price becomes irrelevant. And that's what you need, folks. Price has got to become irrelevant. You become so valuable to people that they could not dream of not having you part of their life. I can remember back in my uh, days uh, training and my first uh, training business, I had clients that come in that no way uh, you, know, you would have thought they could afford, and they couldn't afford per se, services of you know, $700 a month, personal training services. They were living in you know, low income housing and you know, not a great job, making very low income. But it was so important to them, so valuable to them that they you know, canceled the cable TV, they stopped going out to dinner, and they invested in what was valuable to them. And who am I to judge, no, I, you, can't, you, know, you can't buy this because I don't think it's right, I think you should be spending money on other stuff. Not my, not my call. Your job as a business is to serve the people in front of you, provide value, make a great experience, make them feel loved, cared for, appreciated, help them to where they want to go, help them accomplish their goals, you do that, you are going to not only make a ton of money and be very successful, but you're going to help a lot of people and you're going to experience a lot of joy because there's no better feeling than to help a lot of people grow. It's also critical if you find yourself in a situation where there's more and more businesses in your town. I had a guy yesterday on our case, I don't know uh, where he is right now, uh, but talking about um, you know, highly competitive market, uh, gyms on every corner. I said, great, that's fantastic. When there's a competitive market, I love it because that means that people will pay for what you have to sell, what you have to offer. Then it's all about positioning. Well, you got a competitive market, what do you want to be? You want to be the cheapest? You want to be, oh, we're kind of average. <laughs> or you want to be the best? You better be the best. You better become the best, position yourself as the best, be the most valuable, charge the most, deliver the best experience and acquire the most profitable customers in that area and just make your business awesome. That's got to be your focus. Don't try to be the cheapest and don't try to be the average. That's just lame, especially in services. It's just lame. You know, maybe if you guys were selling widgets or hamburgers or something, that would be something different, but not in services. Be the best. All right, read it with me. Number six. Awesome. I love when we read the math. 
formulas. Very good. Number six, value equals CE plus R plus R. Well done. All right, number seven. This will ring home for many of you. Get your crap together. And now it says, you know, no explanation needed. That's true, uh, but we'll take a little time with it. Who here knows they got to get their crap together? Who's here to get their crap together? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, get your crap together first to a few things. You have to stop and get focused, get organized, get a plan, and really start taking responsibility and have discipline to move yourself and your family forward. You can play around for a long time. But when you want to have build something of significance that's going to last for generations, you got to get your crap together. And it's a great opportunity you get to grow. And you've got great support here to help you get your crap together. We'll help you. We've done it for a lot of people. We continue to, to, uh, to do it. All right. Number seven, read this with me. I love that energy right here. Get your crap together. All right, number eight. Margin equals profitability. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. I can't tell you uh, that uh, how many, this is the most important thing we have to do when we start to fix a business, is to create good margins. So many people are just broke because there is no profit in the way that in what they're selling and what they're paying their team or what they're selling and what they're they're able to pay themselves with their expenses you cannot make a business work with bad economics no amount of marketing will fix bad economics all they do is make a unprofitable business a bigger unprofitable business where you're losing more money or it's even tighter with more risk you've got to get that right it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. And continually revisit that every year. We had a great case study yesterday uh, from John talking about uh, how to produce $100,000 a month uh, and uh, combine with a Raise the Rates uh, campaign he does every July now, uh, which was fantastic. If you get a chance to ask him about that. Uh, and we have got to get you profitable. And every stage you want to get the business healthier, we got to get that profit engine up. The more profitable we can get you, uh, the more you have to pay off debt, to build savings, to reinvest in growth and expansion, to hire more team members, to do another location, to fund another business. All those things come out of profits. The more profits we have, the more good we can do. You can't do much good when you're broke. So, number eight, read that with me. Excellent. Okay, number nine. Dave Fan, I'll never forget this one. No, so we, we come up with this principle, know your numbers. And we're sitting around and we're, we're all in the meeting. Dave's on Skype. And what do we want to say for that? Dave goes, always. It's perfect. You know what? That's all we need, that, that's all we need to say. Know your numbers always. You cannot steer the ship if you do not know what's going on. You have to have feedback to make decisions, to make adjustments, to, to turn left, to turn right, to hit the gas, to slow, to let off the gas, to hit the brake. You've got to have feedback. You cannot be blind. And in business, your feedback mechanism is numbers. Numbers in terms of your marketing, your leads, your number of people that requested consultations, your number of qualified consultations booked, the number of your sales, your close rate, your transaction size, your total members, the satisfaction and loyalty of your members, NPS is something we talk about, your financial numbers, your gross revenue, your expenses, your net profit margin, your net revenue, or net, net uh, profit income, uh, your total debt, your savings, all those things we got to know about to manage and steer the ship, to create that financial result, which is really critical for your business to, to succeed and to serve you and your family. 
Number nine, read this with me. Know your numbers. And number 10 is commit to results, not activity. Don't get lost in activity. Hold yourself accountable to results. I can't tell you how many times, and this, this story really comes from a few years ago too, uh, where people come down and we have a workshop, a consulting day in Orlando, uh, and uh, one of our members gets up and he starts sharing all these things about, I'm doing this, my marketing, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. And went on for about 15 minutes talking about all the things he's doing. And I, I said, look, I just want to pause you for a second. You're doing all these things. How many leads did you generate this month in the business? He said four. Wow. Four. We go find four outside in the parking lot right now and be done. You have got to commit to results. The activity doesn't matter. The results are what matters. Hold yourself accountable. Hold your team accountable. Set the standard for results. Define what that success needs to look like and drive everybody, encourage them, inspire them, lead them and your team to that metric, to success. Commit to that. Commit to making that happen. So number 10 is excellent, excellent. Okay, drop these for these guys. Uh, and I'm going to give you guys a special gift here I want you to have with you. I want you to keep it with you. I want you to review it every single day. And I want you to have it guide you in the year ahead and the many years ahead for your business. They're passing these out now. And as you get this, I want you to stand up with me and hold it right in front of you. Yep, stand up. You got it. Pass it out to your table. Stand up. And we're going to read these together. Okay. You ready? I'm not convinced. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number 10. Awesome. Great job. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Folks, wherever you find yourselves in the year ahead, these principles will guide you out. They'll guide you to where you want to go. They'll help you out of any challenge you're facing. And they'll lead yourself and your family to accomplish your goals and fulfill your dreams. Keep them close and review them daily. We have a tremendous conference ahead. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Uh, please give yourselves another round of applause. And we got more to come soon. Thank you.